Hi everybody, I'm Anna and this is my trusty sidekick Mookie. He's a Coton de Tulier, the cotton dog of Tulier in Madagascar. Absolute best pet I've ever owned. I wanted to talk about Cotons and what makes them really special, what separates them from other small breeds of little white dogs because actually they're not all the same. Poodles and Bichons are totally different breeds. Bichons are not mini poodles, which is a really common misconception. Cotons are descended from the Bichon Tenerife, which was a breed of Bichons that was used for farming and it was also used by sailors to keep them company on their long voyages to de-rat the ships and then they were traded and given to people all over the world wherever they traveled to. Cotons are one of the very popular breeds of Bichons and I would say that they are very very similar to Havanese which is a much more common breed and one that is easier to buy and sometimes costs a lot less to purchase. There are some kind of key differences between that you might want to consider when you're thinking of buying one. Cotons like Havanese are happy, clownish, happy-go-lucky. They are really happy living with families. They get along with other dogs. They like children and they're very obedient and easy to train, which is something that's important to me. There are a lot of dog breeds that I really like because I love dogs. But I, for example, wouldn't want a Spitz breed that you have to train all the time regularly or you're going to have like a problem on your hands. With Mookie, it took very little training. I just basically indicated what I wanted him to do. And because he's got such an obedient nature, the most important part of training him was just to really develop that innate loyalty by giving him a good life, taking him on like fun little trips and like winning him over, like making him like me was enough that when I tell him to sit, he'll do it. Like he's sitting right now. Um, and he is so cuddly. If you want a pet that's going to sleep in the crook of your arm and cuddle you all the time and give you a lot of love, this is a great dog, which a Havanese would also fit that purpose, it, purpose. But Bichons and Havanese tolerate different weather. They also have some different health conditions that you might have to consider if you're thinking of getting one. One thing about Cotons is that they have no undercoat, whereas a Havanese has an undercoat. So Havanese can actually tolerate really cold weather and really hot weather. So if you live in a place that gets really cold, a Havanese might be a better fit for you because my dog gets a runny nose, like so runny, he can barely breathe if he's outside without a down jacket in California where it really doesn't get that cold, but he loves the heat. It could be 104 degrees outside and he wants to go outside to lay outside and get sun and be in the heat. He he probably wouldn't want to do that all day, but he likes to go get warmed up outside and then come enjoy the air conditioning. Both breeds are pretty small, so I don't think they're the kind of dog that you could get and leave in your backyard in a dog house, for example, and they wouldn't be happy because they're a companion animal. They're really small, so they could easily get picked up by a bird of prey. Or where I live, you do have to be concerned about your dogs getting kidnapped for rehoming fees if they would be high. So this really is a dog that is going to require a lot of time and attention. Havanese have a higher grooming requirement because they've got a thicker coat that's like harder to manage. But Bichons and Coton de Tuileries also are difficult to groom and you will get charged more at the groomer if you have any Poodle or Bichon breed. They are just harder to groom than other dogs. Uh, the Coton de Tuileries needs weekly bathing because 
they don't shed and so whatever they've like picked up in their coat will stay on their coat and the same is true of Havanese but for Havanese they're prone to allergies and skin conditions so if you get one and you live in an area where you know that the allergies are already really high you should be prepared to take the dog to the vet and do various things to manage allergies and try to hopefully prevent them from having skin conditions because if they're not managed they might really like bite at and and maim their their own skin because they'll just like gnaw at it because it's so itchy so uh that that's something that i think dog owners should take into consideration because i really feel like dogs are family and if they end up having health problems, even if they're very expensive, that that's something that needs to be taken care of. And it honestly might be a reason to not get this dog. It might be better to get a non-companion dog that has lower needs for grooming and uh, just spending time with them. My, I had a dog named Voltaire that was a standard poodle and he was a very robust, healthy dog. He did not have any health problems, any problems. He never got sick. Whereas Mookie has gotten sick multiple times, he has some digestive problems, which almost every owner of a small dog has experienced. But in his case, he just can't eat preservatives in food. So I cook him his own food, which is also an extra. The other thing that he has, which a lot of small dogs are prone to, including Havanese and Cotons, is basically trick knee. So their knee socket is not as deep as it should be. And when it's unmanaged, it can cause really, really bad mobility problems and pain and arthritis. So if you've seen a dog who's small and kind of have has a limp where they'll sometimes limp and maybe they mostly limp on one side, but then they're limping, limping on a different leg, they're not, they're probably not faking it. This is called, this is the trick knee or luxating patella. And it can be easy to manage. Like with Mookie, I give him, since I already cook for him, it's a not an anti-inflammatory diet and then he does get a joint medication which sounds really expensive but because he needs so little of it it's probably about two hundred dollars a year which honestly isn't that bad so i would say that the purchase price of a coton if you've looked into getting one is usually a minimum of a thousand dollars and it can go up to ten thousand dollars they are considered to be one of the healthier small dog breeds which is pretty helpful and the average coton i think is probably around two thousand dollars but they're expensive they're probably going to be high maintenance they have high grooming all the love and care and attention that you give to them you're going to get back because mookie is the most loving, the most cuddly. I mean, he's almost like a lap cat, but also a dog. And I really like him. I think he's an amazing dog, but I think for some people, there are other breeds that might be a better fit. Or if you live somewhere and they don't have breeders of Cotons where you live, but it's pretty easy to get a Havanese because there are a lot more Havanese. They're a more common breed. I've definitely seen some for sale for like $600 to $1,000 and you could get a really good one for two. I, I'm not saying to spend less and actually there are some Havanese that come from like really good breeding lines that will cost you a lot of money. It all depends on what you're getting the animal for. For me, it's definitely a pet and I wouldn't really want to breed dogs, but I love having them. I love the companionship. Mookie is pretty much, I mean, he lets me hold him like he's a baby. He'll sleep in the crook of my arm. I also get really bad migraines and it's so funny because one time I swear he's like, huff, 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 I have lunch, I have needs. And then he immediately like took one look at me and the whole day he was like, okay, I want to be nice to you. He did not make one 
demand. He did not bark. He'll, he can usually tell when I'm going to get a migraine before I can, and he'll come over and look at, lick me. And if I'm really sick and I'm like trying to do things, he will like bark at me until I go lay in bed. So I feel like he gives me so much emotional comfort. He really cares about me. And I don't think that's unique to Mookie. I think a lot of Cotons are really great dogs and maybe just as good as Mookie. But to me, he's like the best dog that ever lived. And I definitely think that other people should get them, but you should think about it. And I mean, I am gonna do everything I can to talk people out of getting a dog if they don't really want to spend the time, effort, money, because it's a really big commitment. And so many people look at Mookie and they're like, oh, he's so cute and he's so sweet and I want one. And I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you everything that I spent on him, everything that I do for him, how much of my time and energy and my husband's time and energy goes into taking care of the dog. And then you can decide if you actually really want one because it is a commitment. And I really don't think that people should get dogs for the heck of it or like bringing one home because they're having a free adoption day somewhere, I guess is good if the dog gets a loving home, but it, it doesn't always end up being the right fit. Different dogs have different personalities and so do different humans. And I think the best is when the combination of what you're looking for in the pet and what the pet needs in an owner matches up. And I feel very blessed to have Mookie. I feel like God gave him to me so that I can have him. And, and actually love that I have for him and the love that he has for me has definitely grown over time. Like I love him so much and I definitely think that people should consider getting Cotons because they make really good pets and family pets. But there are a lot of Bichon and Poodle breeds and a lot of them have overlapping personalities. I hope that this was helpful and that you liked the video and that it will help you when you're making a decision about what dog to get because I, I think there are a lot of breeds that can fit into a family and Cotons are really, really good dogs, but they're very expensive and they're pretty hard to get. So I do think it's worth considering other breeds, but Mookie is the best dog that ever lived. And thank you for watching this video. I'm going to cut myself off because I could literally talk for like an hour straight. Thanks for watching. Bye.